So I'm out here walking the dogs and you know I have no idea how to start this video. This is something I've been wanting to record for a long time, but I just have no clue how to make it make any sense at all. So I'm just gonna see what comes out of my mouth. But most of you know, some of you don't. I'm retired LAPD and I was working crash with gang police back in uh, south south uh, east LA and that was back in the early 80s and 90s when the gang wars were just off the charts violent like crazy violent and you know I grew up in Inglewood man my address was 3726 west of 104th street in Inglewood tough place to be a little white kid um but you know I came from a rough background my mom was prostitute and lots of drugs and hell's angels a lot of violence in my life a lot of hunger a lot of poverty <clears throat> welfare living in motels and shit after we got evicted from that place but but you know we were there when rap first came out with the Sugar Hill Gang and you know my friends and I we were like blown away at the whole concept and I mean even some of them OGs from the projects will tell you back in the 80s when I was a cop I was I could out freestyle anybody out rap battle anybody I was good I'm still good I'm 60 years old but I was really good back then but you know I've been listening to Easy e and you know, NWA, uh, Ice Cube, all of that, back when they first started, and just some of the East Coast, West Coast shit that was going on, man, I was there for all of it, and I had a 78-mile drive to and from work, I lived in the Inland Empire, I worked in Watts, I would jump in my 85 Buick, and I would crank, you know, Real motherfucking G's. I'd crank that shit full blast. I'd listen to that shit all the way to work. I knew and I know every lyric to every fucking song from those guys. So I've been listening to that. Even during this walk, I was listening to it. That's what made me decide to just start recording. And, uh... I mean, I just, it's hard to... I don't think anybody could understand this, but, you know, being a freaking white ex-cop tired cup. Probably going to sound weird to young people, but and some older people. But I had a lot of fucking respect for them gangsters, man. For a lot of, a lot of them. Now, that some of them were fucking righteous, fucking violent motherfuckers, but for the most part even back in the day, they were not evil people. You know, there, but for the grace of God go I, they were young people born in a situation and in an environment into an environment you either banged or you got banged, if you know what I mean. And they were, I just was always in awe of, I just thought they just had such a good look about him. I know it sounds weird, no homo, but like Easy E was, I thought, very handsome. And I liked the swag of the era, you know, the creased khaki pants and the white t-shirts. I know some of my old cop friends are probably going to think I'm insane. If they ever saw this, they'd be like, fuck it, this guy's nuts. But truthfully, when I listen to this music, I can, it's like I suddenly have memories, and I can remember each and every one of these people that I dealt with, whether I arrested them or not, and it wasn't all about arresting people, I know in that, in this day of all the cop haters, they all say, oh man, what must they have done before cameras, it's like it is today, man, well, the majority of cops were in it for the right reason, man, I mean, my partner and I, we, I used to have videos of this on my old YouTube channel that the thought police shut down because they didn't like that I was a Trump supporter but I lost all my videos but we had news stories of me and my partner setting up the very first neighborhood watch meeting in the history of the projects we set up uh, the first basketball game between the Great Street Crips and, and South Bureau crash LAPD's crash and you know we did a lot of shit raffled off all kinds of stuff you know we, we were really into trying to make that thing, a, that, that whole neighborhood, a better thing, a better experience for people. We understood the majority of people were just good people living in bad times. I'm not stroking myself. I'm just saying it wasn't about hate. 
you know, I can still, I hear the music and I can smell the jury curl, you know, that I used to, you know, you'd be searching people, man, and you'd be think, I'd be thinking, some good looking guys, man, and not in a gay way, not in a Joe Biden way, but just, you know, really good people, man, and, you know, I used to talk with them, I was, I'm a talker, man, and everybody that knows me knows, I would talk to everybody, whether we were just pulling over and talking about shit, real shit, or if I was arresting you, man, I was going to get to know you and everything about you and how you ended up in this situation and what, what was going on with your family. By the time I got done booking you, man, I knew everything about you and I shared everything about me. Because back in the day, if people before they knew me, they just assumed I was from the valley and from a good home and they had no idea that I went to school wearing the same fucking shoes till they rotted off my feet and I was a poor motherfucker, man. But now you're dealing with some real motherfuckers. Jeez, brother, please. Don't step to the... Yeah, man. I don't know what. I'm just reminiscing. Maybe it's because I'm old now. And I just can't stop looking back. But I often wonder where are those guys. Little baby lokes and even the OGs. And I hope everybody's doing better, man. I really do.